Alluvium and Star Atlas had a debate, and I'm gonna break it down after a quick word from our sponsors. This uh, stream is brought to you by Wax, ladies and gentlemen. So if you guys wanna hit us with a follow, the number one guild in the whole Web3 space, the number one guild without a doubt, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure. And now that you've followed Wax and Juice, let's get into how all this drama got started. And as always, it got started with a tweet. Kieran calling out content creators for shilling Star Atlas because of his concerns with the project's ability to execute on their vision. Kagi pulls out an Uno reverse on his ass and challenges Kieran to battle it out with Star Atlas founder Michael Wagner. And that's how this debate got started. But was it even really a debate? I'll get into that in a bit, but first, Kieran kicks it off with why he's doing what he's doing. People have this idea of me as this troll guy who just hates on projects and, you know, is out there to destroy and mock other projects for no reason whatsoever, right? And to be honest, like, it's it's just nonsensical. I don't have the time. The only time that I'll step in is when I believe that a Web3 project is taking advantage of potentially naive, very new adopters to Web3 gaming. And the reason I step in and try and protect them is they are critical for mass adoption. So that's pretty much why this wasn't a debate. It's really Kieran putting forward his concerns about Star Atlas to their founder. So what are Kieran's concerns? Let's just go into what Star Atlas in their white paper is uh, explaining they're going to deliver. So we got a grand strategy space exploration game. We've got land and territory control, vehicle and fleet control, including a broad variety of spaceships, space and land-based mining operations, player versus environment missions, player versus player combat, dynamic career system harnessing specialized equipment, and to just go for the holy holy trinity of uh of uh features we're we're also going to have it vr and a right now that is an amazing vision i love it i think i would play 10 hours a day on this of, of this game and you know it has a very 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 similar vision to star citizen and as we know star citizen has a 400 million dollar budget or, or has raised that much money so far they've got 600 700 developers that are working on this they've been going for 10 years and they don't have a game and yet here we have star atlas a brand new web 3 game that is doing all of this plus integrating blockchain into it as well i believe that all of this is happening i believe star atlas is in this position where they obviously can't show better gameplay because they don't have the team that michael is suggesting they do okay so kieran doesn't think that star atlas have the team size to accomplish their vision Surely Michael's gonna come back with some facts to reassure us all. Kieran, I appreciate you reading through the white paper because honestly that does describe the vision quite well and that is exactly what we intend to build. We fully anticipate this to take a long time. Your criticisms online were with respect to how many personnel do we have working on this project? So I'll address that first. Now, as I said on Twitter, we're currently around 240 people. Pulled these numbers on Friday, we are at 236 people. Now, how do we categorize those people? We have 132 that are internal to Star Atlas. Now, that's all things <clears throat> operations. A few moments later. Sorry, can, you just go, can, can we just go back there? You said how many devs? So we have 40 across those four different departments. So this includes Unreal devs. Uh, it includes our How many uh, Unreal engine. devs do you, do you have internally? Internally is probably four today. So Star Atlas has only four Unreal Engine developers on their internal team. But then that got me wondering, is that enough? Um, since obviously they do have external Unreal developers because they are outsourcing the production of the majority of their game. And as he says in this interview, all of the actual art and design and all of the most important things do happen in-house. So I spoke to Roger. 
He's Alluvium's lead concept artist. And I asked him, firstly, how many Unreal developers does Alluvium have internally? He said around about 30. So I then asked Rajir what his view was on Star Atlas's situation. Now, what Rajir told me is that Alluvium, of course, also outsource certain production. So Alluvium has two regions out of its seven regions that it has given to other development companies to, to do on their behalf. And he told me that it actually takes four of our Unreal Engine developers around about 20 hours per week in total just to um, liaise, communicate and make sure that they are essentially staying on track and, and doing things the Alluvium way. Now, obviously, Star Atlas aren't, you know, exporting just two little regions within their entire game. They're exporting the development of their entire game. There are a lot of open-ended questions here of, you know, is this temporary? Do they plan on hiring more internal Unreal engineers? Do they have a different plan? Like overall, my my sort of feeling coming out of this interview is that their founder actually wasn't correctly equipped to completely answer this question correctly because throughout the rest of the interview what i mostly hear from michael is buzzwords string together very very well he's an incredibly good salesman but i i just didn't feel that this question of how is it actually possible with only four unreal engine devs to create a game of this scale the other essential question that was not answered is when compared to star citizen which as kieran said has 600 700 people working on it and they've been working on it for 10 years and the game still isn't out you know star atlas earlier in this interview you heard him say that they have 236 people currently working for them and like around half of them are external and a bunch of their internal team is entirely on the marketing end of the spectrum and just business side and has nothing to do with game development so how are they going to in five to seven years as he says achieve what star citizen couldn't do with maybe near triple as much resources essentially um how is that actually possible i actually think that it would have been really great to actually hear from potentially a developer working for star atlas because i don't feel that that question has actually been answered in this debate and as far as i'm concerned it's actually left a gaping hole in in star atlas's narrative essentially because five to seven years genuinely does look like 15 20 years especially when you compare it to something of the scope of star citizen that don't even have to integrate blockchain into their game and i think this is really the red flag that was popping up in kieran's vision and and why it led to having this debate like a lot of star atlas people after this debate felt that they won the debate but i i feel like it just it's really opened this open-ended question mark of is this even possible, what they're trying to attempt, considering the resources currently at their disposal? And how is it possible? Kieran, dismissing that. Uh, outside of you, my friend, we don't have anybody questioning our team size. No. What? Yeah. Mates, look at your YouTube comments. Like, bro, come on. Like, we got to... <laughs> okay, okay. Well, you can't base it on YouTube comments. All right, look. I, I, I'm well, a, I, I mean, yeah. like, okay, you okay. base it on the videos that developers have created and are saying, like, this doesn't make sense. You, If you're saying that you don't have an open-ended question out there across t crypto Twitter, mainstream, gaming devs, if, if you think you don't have that question mark, then you're oblivious. Like, please stop wrecking our retail investors who are going to be my investors potentially and other AAA games investors. That's why I care because I think what you're doing is unethical in my eyes. So my I, I think by and large though, what it comes down uh, in your case is you're a bit intimidated about what we're doing. You're a bit jealous of the success that we've encountered, honestly, and a primary motivator for you, Kieran, I'm, I'm going to be honest here, man. From? I'm going to be honest, man. A primary motivator for you is the money. Like you've communicated that on Twitter in the past that, 100%. you know, a hundred, like a, a large component of your motivator is the money. That's not the case for us. <laughs>
<laughs> now, before I end this video, I will be playing you guys a gag reel of basically just Kagi Jan being an absolute clown. <laughs> but I do want to say before that comes, um, obviously like like this video, subscribe to this channel for more content. But also Kagi Jan, as much as he did an absolutely terrible job of hosting um, the thing, like there was technical difficulties and he's a professional streamer. He pulled it off on Zoom on stream. He literally upgraded his Zoom package. What? <laughs> absolutely clowning around. But he did bring these two CEOs together. He did provide the platform. And at the end of the day, I found it very, very interesting to watch. I am Kagi Janet, if you guys don't know me. I'm the uh, number one YouTuber in the world. I haven't paid for the Zoom subscription and Kieran just told me about it. Like you're cheap ass motherfucker. But when it's all said and done, I want you guys to remember that there are always two sides to every story. If you have the time, I definitely recommend you check out the full debate. There will be a link to it in the description of this video. And if you don't, or even if you do, stick around a little bit longer just to see a little bit of the other side. And I'm not trying to take sides here, guys, by the way. Some people are like, oh, you're taking sides, blah, blah, blah. Look, I like Illuvium as much as I like Star Atlas. I like both. They're both my, my dads. Um, although Kieran kind of denied me as a dad. Uh, but, you know, like all trolls aside, I respect these two guys very much. I'm not taking any sides. I think, you know, it's two different projects, two different scopes. Um, and it's fair that, you know, that Kieran has all these questions, to be honest. It's it's even, you know, it, it, it makes me even more bullish on Star Atlas because now, you know, he's applying pressure. You know, it's good. It's good. It's all good pressure at the end of the day. Now, now, yeah. as, a, as a, an investor, Kagi Jan right here. I went into Star Atlas knowing what I was going into, just so you understand. And there's a lot of people like me. And I was very clear. I even played Star Citizen to compare a live. While Star Atlas was selling spaceships, I played Star Citizen so that people could see, hey, this is what it takes. These people took 10 years, you know? I, I gave people perspective, you know, when I, when I was uh, talking about Star Atlas. I knew what I was going to. And I think a lot of people in Star Atlas have that vision where it's like, we don't care. We want to make this game happen because mm -hmm. this is a massive, massive vision. Perfect, perfect. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was uh, very, very fun for me. It was uh, really, I came to do this as a joke, to be honest. Uh, you know, some people are like mad in chat, like, oh, moderator, shut up, do this, do that, blah, 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 this and that. Look, honestly, this was all a joke in reality on Twitter. And then it kind of became a little bit more serious. And, you know, real concerns were brought up here. And I hope all of you kind of understand both sides. And, you know, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens uh, down the line. Let's see what happens down the line. I'm going to keep supporting yeah. both projects, Illuvium and Sir Alice. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'm Vetamore. You're the future. And I'll be seeing you guys there.